Don't buy any V8 until you've tried Chevrolet's record-smashing Turbo Fire V8. Most modern in design, lowest in price. And now your Chevrolet dealer presents... Treasury Men in Action. The place, a large eastern city, a seaport. The time, a little over a year ago. It's a 15 joule Swiss movement. Shockproof, waterproof. Where are you going to get a watch like that for 10 bucks, huh? Mm -hmm. Look at it. My bad. Where'd you get it? Look, bud, it ain't stolen if that's what you're worried about. A friend of mine picked him up at an auction. Cheap. Ah, it's a good buy, all right. You got any more of these for the same price? You got a ladies' model? Sure, I got plenty of them. You buy another one, I'll sell you two for 19 bucks. Huh? What do you say? You better come with me, mister. Huh? My name's Draper. Detective Sergeant Draper. Not very long ago, we had a case involving the theft of some $55,000 worth of Swiss watches. It was memorable for two reasons. First of all, its solution depended on obtaining the truth from any one of a number of notorious liars. And secondly, the entire investigation was made in cooperation with the local police department, for whose efforts we are indeed grateful. And now in my role as Chief, Division of Investigations, United States Customs, I'm going to tell you about it. This is Treasury File 4253, United States Customs. The case of the cut-rate watches. 2,000 years ago, the Romans built stone arches to carry water across southern France. Other builders used the arch to support great buildings and to erect monuments to man's achievements. Today, engineers at Chevrolet use the proven strength of the arch in still another way. They build an arch of steel into the motoramic Chevrolet for 55. This arch of steel keeps Chevrolet's body by fissure rigid on the roughest roads, protects it against body twist. But it serves another purpose too. It's also an air chamber that collects pure air for Chevrolet's high-level ventilation system. This double-duty arch of steel is just one of many exclusive features in the motoramic Chevrolet for 55. You can see them all at your Chevrolet dealers. I was just trying to make a fast buck. That's, that's my business, peddling things. I didn't have any idea that them watches were stolen merchandise. I, I, I bought them from a guy I'd never seen before. Yeah? Out in the street, you told me he was a friend of yours. You told me you bought him at an accident. Well, that, that's what he told me. Who? What did he look like? Well, I didn't get a very good look at him, right? Now you listen to me, Emery. Every one of those 12 watches you had was marked with an identifying symbol for the United States Customs. There's a good chance they were smuggled into the country. Now, are you going to tell me who you got them from, or do you want to get mixed up in a federal case? Oh, I don't want to do neither. I mean, I, I told you the truth. I bought them from a guy on the street. If he ain't gonna book me, I, uh, I didn't do nothing. Take it easy. I'll let you know as soon as I hear from the Treasury Department. As soon as I heard the watches were imported, I wired the information to the police and to our warehouse officer. I see. These 12 watches which were recovered by the police yesterday, they were part of a shipment that arrived from Switzerland less than two weeks ago. That's right. The shipment had cleared inspection and was being held under custody at a bonded warehouse awaiting the payment of duty. Someone broke into the warehouse and stole 12 watches. They stole a good deal more than 12 watches, Lamar. The shipment contained five cases, each worth about $10,000. And all of them are gone. There's no lead as to uh, how they were taken or who took them? No lead so far. That's why I sent for you, Lamar. Those watches were under government custody. We want them back. On the following day, Agent Lamar checked with Detective Sergeant Draper at police headquarters, and the two men proceeded to the warehouse from which the watches had been stolen. The warehouse was a bonded building in which the United States Customs Service had rented three upper floors for custody storage. After contacting the warehouse officer, a government employee who was on duty at all times, 
Agent Lamar and Sergeant Draper were taken upstairs in the warehouse elevator to the floor where the stolen watches had been stored. The fifth or top floor. As soon as I got word, I came up here to check on the shipment of watches and found the five cases missing. Do you have any idea of how anyone could have broken in here without you noticing it? That's what I can't understand. How anybody could break in here at all. This elevator door is always locked, and I've got the only key that opens it. When you came up here to check on the stolen watches, was it locked then? Absolutely. And the lock hadn't been tampered with. There's no other way to get onto this floor? Only through this door to the roof. But this door is always locked, too. There was no evidence of it having been forced? No. Nope. It was just the way it is now. There's absolutely no evidence of anyone having broken in here. Except for one thing. The watches are gone. Just a second. Hello. Yes. One moment, please. For you, Sergeant, your office. Thanks. Yeah. When was this? OK, we'll be right there. What's up? The guy we caught selling those watches, now he wants to talk. He suddenly remembered who he bought them from. You want to be on this? I certainly do. Let's go. Uh, he was a heavy set sort of guy. Kind of stocky. Dark hair, dark complexion, stocky build. Yeah, about 30, 35 years old. And you say his name was Pietro something or other? Yeah, Pietro. So you just happened to bump into a guy called Pietro. And he gives him $60 for 12 watches. Only well, you don't know anything about him except his first name and that he looks like about 9 million other people. Are you sure you're not making all this up, Emery? Are you sure there is such a guy as Pietro? Well, sure. I met him in a bar. What bar? Well, uh, let's see now. It was, a, it was a little place down near the waterfront. Yeah, Al's place. Al Berwin's place. Why didn't you tell us all this before? Why did you cover up for this guy, Pietro, if you never saw him before? Well, I, I figured I might get hurt if I squealed on a guy like that. And then I realized that you guys wouldn't let me go unless I told you the truth. Is that why you're squealing on him now? Or are you just imagining this guy, Pietro, to back up your story? Look, if you don't believe me, just ask Al Berwin. Just go over to Al's bar and ask him about Pietro. Okay, Emery. We will. Sure, sure. My name's Al Berwin, all right. Well, yeah, I never heard of this Pietro fellow you're talking about. No, sir. There was no Pietro selling watches around here. I never heard of the guy. What about Sid Emery? Did you ever hear of him? Not by that name. Of course, a lot of guys come in here I don't know the names of. But uh, that one don't ring a bell at all. That's kind of funny. Emery claims he knows you. Claims he bought the watches from Pietro right here in your bar. No, sir, that's a plain lie. Nothing like that ever happens around here. I work too hard getting my liquor license to let a couple of crooks lose it for me by selling stolen watches around here. I wouldn't do that, not for Emery or Pietro or even my own brother. What's your brother's name, Mr. Berwin? Oh, I, I was just saying that. I don't even have one. All right, thanks very much, Mr. Berwin. If you hear anything about this Pietro man, be sure and give us a call, will you? You bet I will. Thank you. Yes, sir, you bet I will. What do you want? Pedro? Look, don't come around here again. There was a T-man asking for you about those stolen watches. Yeah, a T-man and a cop. Yeah? Well, what did you tell him? OK, OK, quit yelling, will you? As long as I keep my mouth shut, you got nothing to worry about. Who was that, baby? Oh, just a friend of mine. Why, you say something wrong? Make you mad about something? Not exactly. Then what are you pulling away from me for? Ain't you gonna let me thank you for the nice present you give me? Huh? The watch, sweetie. 
It's beautiful. I can hardly wait to show it to the girls at the club. Uh, look, honey. Maybe you better let me have the watch back for a little while. What for? Well, it ain't fixed up right yet. You know, it might run too fast or too slow until I get it adjusted. I'll bring it back to the guy I bought oh, it from. Oh, no, then. you don't. You gave me this watch, I'll have it fixed myself. Look, honey, I just want it back for a little while. What are you lying to me for, Pietro? I can see it all over your face. So you can see it. Just give me the watch and don't start any arguments. I don't want to get tough with you, honey. Then why don't you tell me what's wrong? What's the watch got to do with it? Nothing. Just give it to me. <gasps> God, you're hurting my arm. Then stay still. <gasps> you're a louse, Pietro. You'll never give me that watch back. It's hot or something, ain't it? Shut up. That's it. The watch is hot. That's what the guy told you on the phone. The watch is hot. <gasps> I said shut up. If you tell anybody else about this, you'll get a lot more than that. Now go on. Get out of here. Don't come back. Don't worry. I wouldn't come anywhere near you. I wouldn't spit on you if you were on fire. And thanks for a wonderful time. Now, here's a wonderful car. Looks fine. How about a demonstration ride? New Bel Air Chevrolet. Step right in. Mmm, beautiful. Picks up nice. Sweet on the turns. Brakes act fast. No forward lurch. Wonder how come? That's Chevrolet's new anti-dive braking control. Now for the big test. Say, passes like a pro. Like some factual information on the new Chevrolet now? No, thanks. No, all I have to. You know what? Yes. I like it. Returning to the warehouse from which the stolen watches were taken, Agent Lamar reasoned that if the thief had gained entry without forcing any locks, it must have been an inside job. A job which might have been done by removing part of the elevator door and getting in without disturbing the lock. Immediately, Lamar made arrangement to question the warehouse employees on the chance that one of them might fit the description of the mysterious Pietro. And although none of them did, one employee remembered that an elevator repairman who did fit this description had done some work recently on the warehouse elevators. From the manager of the elevator repair company which services the warehouse, Lamar learned that a man who answered Pietro's description did indeed repair an elevator at the warehouse only a few days ago. And immediately after completing his work at the warehouse, he had quit his job. His name, Pietro Catala. His address, a cheap rooming house downtown. Yeah? United States Customs, miss. Does Pietro Cotola live here? Live here? Yes, this is the address that was on file at the company where he works. Why, that lousy crumb. The nerve of him given this is his address. Pietro never lived here. This is my room. I see. Can you tell me anything about him? Sure. Sure, come on in. Thank you. Honey, what's he done? What are you after him for? I'd just like to ask him a few questions. Well, whatever it is, I hope you hang a good one on him. Two-bit Indian giver. I've had enough of him. Piker, look at that. He gives me a watch and then almost takes my arm off trying to get it back. He gave you a watch? What make was it? Oh, I don't know. Some sort of foreign make. Did he steal the watch? Is that why he wanted it back? Perhaps. Do you know where Catala really lives? Do you know where I can find him? Sure, if he still lives there. Carter Hotel, room 22. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Sergeant Draper was immediately notified of the new lead on Pietro Catala. And although Catala was not in his room, Draper obtained a warrant for his arrest. Meanwhile, Catala's police record was investigated. And under the name of Peter Wilson, alias Pat Denver, 
alias Pietro Catala. He was found to have two previous convictions for burglary and was still wanted in the state of New Jersey for robbing a filling station. At 7 p.m. that night, when Catala returned to his hotel room, Lamar and Draper were waiting for him. Don't move, Catala. This is the police. What's the idea? You crazy busting in like this? What's this all about? You Pietro Catala? That's right, but so I what? got a warrant for your arrest. For what? What's this all about? About selling stolen watches. You're crazy. I never did nothing like that. No, a guy named Sid Emery says you did. Emery? I never even heard of him. You got nothing on me. I never sold no watches. Let's go, Catala. You can tell that to Sid Emery. Emery, we finally caught up with your man, Pietro. We want you to identify him. Is that the man who sold you the watches? No, he's not the one. He's not the one I know. You see, what did I tell you? You got the wrong guy. Take him outside. Now, what is this? You told us you bought those watches from a man named Pietro, a short, stocky guy that fits his description to a T. Now you say he's not the man. Well, I, I, I was just playing it smart, that's all. That's Pietro, all right. I just wasn't going to say so to his face. A guy like that would murder me if he knew I was giving him away to the cops. Sit down. You haven't told us a straight story yet. Every time we get you in here, you come out with something new. Well, look, I, I... You better tell us the truth, mister. $55,000 worth of watches were stolen from a warehouse, and you were in on it somehow. No, I wasn't. I didn't have any part of it. It was Pietro and Al. They're the ones that robbed that warehouse, not me. All I did was buy a couple of watches. Pietro and Al Bowen? Yeah. The man who owns the bar? Well, sure. He was in it from the beginning. He's the one that introduced me to Pietro. According to Berwin, he doesn't know either one of you. Well, he's lying his head off. He knows us all right. He, he's just trying to duck the blame. And what are you trying to do? I'm trying to tell you the truth. Look, I don't know what anybody else told you, but this is what really happened. I was having a drink in Al's bar one night, a simple little drink, when all of a sudden Al comes over and introduces me to a guy named Pietro, a guy he says I might be able to work some kind of a deal with. So Pietro starts telling me about some merchandise he can get for me. And all of a sudden, I realize he's talking about stealing stuff from a warehouse. Oh, no, no, I don't want any part of it. You told me you had something for me to sell cheap. OK, but busting in a warehouse to get it. No, not for me, Pietro. I don't want any part of it. If you and I want to pull a second story job, that's up to you. Count me out. And I walked straight out of there. And what's more, I didn't come back until a week later, and that was long after the watches were stolen. And how did you happen to get them? Well, I, I bought them from Pietro. Well, he walked up to me on the street one day and he sold them to me. Twelve of them. Twelve stolen watches. Well, I didn't know they were stolen. Pietro told me he got them at an auction. I believed him. Well, I didn't know there was, there was watches in that warehouse. Only him and Al know that. When Pietro talked to me, he just said it was merchandise. In other words, you had nothing to do with it. It was all Pietro and Al Berwin. Every bit. Okay, Henry. If that's your story, we'll see how it stands up. On the basis of Sid Emery's statement, Sergeant Draper picked up Al Berwin at his place of business and brought him back to headquarters for questioning. Don't get me wrong, fellas. I want to cooperate. Only why should I get involved in a mess that I had absolutely nothing to do with? I run a tap room. I'm not a crook. And why did you tell us you didn't know Pietro or Sid Emery? You want me to bring them in here and have them call you a liar right to your face? Well, what do they say? What do they tell you about me? Then you admit you know them. Well, yes, I suppose they have been in my place once or twice. I, I didn't recognize the names when you mentioned them the other day. Look, Berwin, Sid Emery says that you and Pietro were the ones who stole the watches from the warehouse. That's a lie. I told Pietro I wouldn't have anything to do with it. That's why I introduced him to Sid. Then you did introduce them to Sid. Yeah. Pietro wanted me to go in on a deal with him. I wouldn't have any part of it. Then he and Sid worked it out together. 
Berwin, are you telling the truth? Why, well, sure. Look, I don't know what Sid Emery told you, but this is the way it really happened. It was kind of a slow night at the bar about a week ago, and I was just doing my job, minding my business, when a guy I'd known around for some time come up and asked me if I'd be interested in some merchandise that just come in from Switzerland. And if you go in with me on this deal, I can get you all the watches you can sell for 10 bucks a piece. Yeah? Why well, can you get them that cheap? Look, I know where I can get them for nothing at all. Only I may need a little help. Doing what? Just waiting outside the warehouse until I lower them to you on a rope. I can swipe four or five cases of them, just like that. Nothing doing. Why not? What have you got to lose? My liquor license, for one thing, and a couple of years in jail for another. How are you going to get caught? I'll do all the rough work. All you'll have Nothing to do is... Nothing doing, you... kid. Now, look, I like dough as much as anybody, but not that kind. No, sir. No, sir. And that's the way it went. As nearly as I can remember the words, that's exactly the way it went. What about Pietro and Sid? A minute ago, you said you introduced them to each other. Well, yeah. Well, Pietro kept pestering me about going in on a deal with him. So I introduced him to somebody who might want to talk about it. Sid Emery. Yeah. They talked for a while in a booth, and that never came of it as far as I knew until you walked in on me the other day. In other words, this whole deal was set up between Pietro and Sid. You are completely in the clear. Completely. Okay, Berwin. You better wait outside for a while. We're going to want to talk to you again. Hey, you're not going to take my license away, are you? Outside. He said that? He told you it was Emery and me that's, that worked this deal? Well, you ain't going to believe him, are you? Well, that's the biggest lie I've ever heard of. All right. What's your version of the story, Catala? Version, my eye. I'm telling you the truth. Al Berwin's the guy that did all this. Him and Sid Emery. They were the ones that put me up to it. Up to what? Fixing it so they can bust into the warehouse and swipe them watches. They made me leave the door open for them. What door? The one on the fifth floor, the one that leads to the roof. They made me unlock it the day I was working at the elevator at the warehouse. So they can come back at night and get in from the roof. Now, wait a minute. Let's take this slowly, Catala. You say you unlocked the door to the roof and left it open for Berwin and Emery. That's right. And you did all this while you were repairing the elevator? Sure, there was plenty of time. You see, it was like this. I had the elevator car standing on the fourth floor while I was on top fixing the cable. So nobody could see what I was doing. I took half the door off the rollers so I wouldn't have to break the lock. And then I went over to the roof door and fixed that lock. So it would open from the outside for anybody coming down from the roof. And that's all I did. Unlock the door for them. For whom? For Berwin and Emery. They came back to the warehouse that night and dropped down to the roof from another building. The roof door was open. So all they had to do was come down the stairs, grab the cases and beat it. I told them, where were you all this time while the robbery was going on? Me, I was at home, like I told you. I wasn't even in on the deal. They made me do their dirty work. Made me leave the door open. How could they make you do anything like that? I'll tell you how. They came up to my room the night before and threatened me. Said they would turn me over to the police unless I did them a favor. I don't know what kind of story they told you, but this is the way it happened. You gotta do this for us, Pietro. There's $50,000 worth of watches in that warehouse, and you're gonna help us get them. Watch out, will you? I can't do nothing like that. We ain't kidding, Pietro. If you don't leave the door to that roof open for us, we're gonna go to the cops and tell them who you really are. I, I don't get you. No? Your name ain't really Pietro. And it ain't Catola, neither. It's just plain Wilson. Peter Wilson. You're crazy. Am I? You want it in the state of New Jersey. The cops get you now, you're going up for a long time. Now, what do you say? You're gonna do this for us, or you're gonna go to jail? What could I do? What could I tell him? I didn't want to go to jail. 
What? Well, well, don't you believe me? I wouldn't admit I was wanted in Jersey if I wasn't telling the truth. I'm practically sending myself to jail. In other words, you're saying you were forced into doing what you did. You went in on this deal with Berwin and Emery, and you didn't go back to the warehouse and help them commit the actual robbery. On my honor, I didn't have nothing to do with it. If it wasn't for Berwin and Emery, I'd still have my old job back at the elevator company. And you gained nothing from the robbery. You didn't get a share of the watches? I didn't get nothing. Up until the time you picked me up, I didn't even know they stole the watches. Now, that's a very convincing story, Catola. Except for one very important thing. We found the watches. Huh? Police officers searched the hotel in which you're staying. Down in the basement, they found five missing cases. That's a lie. No, Catala. That's the truth. They found them in a wardrobe trunk registered in your name. Now look, why don't you tell us the real story? Give us a statement. Were Berwin and Emery in on this with you? Or did you do it yourself? I had to do it alone. Berwin and Emery backed out on me. That's the trouble with guys like that. You can't believe a word they say. Chevrolet dealer quick. That old K tag gives you your pick of the finest used cars money can buy. When you drive it away, you'll catch everyone's eye. For a good used car, stop in today and see the man who sells Chevrolet. Although it is not clear to this day exactly what part was played by the three suspects in the discussions which preceded the warehouse burglary. Subsequent evidence proved that Peter Wilson, alias Pietro Cataula, was the only one actually on the scene of the crime at the time the burglary took place. All three men were indicted, however, charged with burglary, receiving stolen goods, and conspiracy. But the charges against Emery and Berwin were dismissed on grounds of insufficient evidence. Pietro Cataula was convicted and is now serving his sentence. One more job. Well done by your treasury men in action. Your Chevrolet dealer, who invites you to pleasure drive the Motoramic Chevrolet, reminds you to watch the Dinah Shore Show every Tuesday and Thursday evening over another television network. And to tune in again next week at this same time for Treasury Men in Action. This is Art Baker for Chevrolet, reminding you to drive with care everywhere. at this time, Treasury Men in Action brings you the suspenseful story of a woman who set a trap for a counterfeiter and succeeded in being caught herself in The Case of the Man Trap.